Um, hello, everybody. This is a, a great joy for me to be a part of a panel that I really had nothing to do with. And that's, that is with a huge compliment to all of the beautiful faces that you see on this panel um, discussion right now as our interns have spent the summer working towards creating an unbelievable panel discussion based on the work that they have done. They have selected all of the panelists that you will hear from tonight. Um, and I could not be more proud and more excited about the future because we are looking at it. The future of where adaptive is going to go is, is going to be in the hands of many of the talent that we have, that we were lucky enough to have as part of the Runway of Dreams internship program. And I really am excited about the future. So without further ado, I am going to allow all of them to take over and really create the panel discussion and huge gratitude to all of the panelists that we have on today. Derek, Billy, Faith, Nancy, Garrison, incredibly grateful to not only be on this journey with you, but to call you my friend is an, an even bigger honor. So without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Miranda. Thank you so much, Mindy and Dawn. Welcome everyone. My name is Miranda Prater and I'm a junior attending Columbia College Chicago studying fashion merchandising with a minor in marketing. Thank you so much for joining our panel event and on the need for design innovation, mainstream adaptive clothing and fashion inclusivity. The key reasons why the Runway of Dreams mission exists today. Runway of Dreams works towards a future of inclusion, acceptance and opportunity in the fashion industry for the community of people with disabilities. And we do this through our campaign for inclusion, adaptive runway shows, college clubs, wardrobe grants for those in need and scholarships to rising design innovators. Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Kahn and I will be attending Cornell University with a major in fashion design and a minor in entrepreneurship. Before we get started, we wanted to let everyone know that you can send questions in the chat section and some of them will be shared at the end. In the spirit of time, we are going to ask our amazing and awe-inspiring panelists to each take 30 seconds to introduce themselves. Let's start with you, Derek. Hello, everyone. My name is Derek Flores and I work at zapposadaptive.com. Uh, kind of focusing on merchandising and site merchandising and operations and, and really trying to continue this movement through the lens of Zappos. Thank you for sharing, Derek. Now let's hear from you, Billy. Hello, everyone. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, my name is Billy Price. I am the co-founder of Billy Footwear. We are a shoe company based in Seattle, Washington, where we took fashion, function, and smashed the two together in the spirit of inclusion and universal design. Thank you, Billy. Now, can we hear from you, Nancy? Hi, everyone. Thank you for this lovely invitation. I'm Nancy Connor, the founder of Smart Adaptive Clothing. And we make clothing for men and women, blouses and shirts. And we start with the small details in mind because they matter most. Thank you, Nancy. Now, can we hear from you, Faith? Um. I wasn't expecting that, but um, my name is Faith. I've been involved uh, with One Man Dream since 2015. Mm -hmm. I, um, I go to Marin School for the Blind. I'll be a senior next year. And I like horseback riding. And I am almost 18. Thank you, Faith. And last of all, Garrison. Hi, I'm Garrison Red. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I'm a Team USA para powerlifter. I'm also the founder of the Garrison Red Project, which helps individuals with disabilities achieve independence by providing them with the resources that they need, as well as I'm a model, disabled rights advocate, author, motivational speaker. So I'm like a jack of all trades. And I've been with Gamut and Runaway of Dreams for quite some time now. <laughs> Hi, 
Hi everyone, I'm Tori Belcour and I'm a senior attending Villanova University studying communications. This question is for Billy, Derek, and Nancy. Please take an extra minute to share why and how you got into the adaptive fashion space today. Let's start with you, Billy. Well, thank you for that question. It's a great one. Uh, for me, I got into the adaptive space really by accident. Uh, so I am a wheelchair user. That wasn't always the case. Unfortunately, I fell out of a three-story window when I was in college. And when that happened, my world changed. And uh, there were a lot of things I figured out how to do along the way, like dressing and figuring out how to drive and going back to school. But the one thing that always eluded me was shoes. And uh, what I found was there really wasn't anything on the market that uh, I was looking for. It had the fashion ele element that I was looking for and uh, the functionality that I could use so I could put my shoes on independently. So frankly, I teamed with a buddy and we did something about it. So that's how I got into the adaptive space when it comes to fashion. Thank you, Billy. Um, can we hear from you, Derek? Absolutely. Thanks so much, Tori, for the for the question. Um, I have a background in apparel. I've been in the apparel uh, game, whatever you want to call it, for over 15 years and um, have just had a passion for apparel um, and was able to kind of parlay that through one of the brands that I worked with in the past to kind of petition the Special Olympics, special uh, the Paralympics for grappling and uh, Olympic style wrestling in those particular uh, uh, events. And because of that, when uh, our Zappos Adaptive Stories uh, came to be, um, I was asked if I could potentially help uh, curate some product specific for people with disabilities, specific for people with dressing needs, um, because of uh, this background I had in working with a nonprofit around uh, grappling and, and mixed martial arts in, in, in the Special Olympics and Paralympics. So um, just kind of maybe happenstance, I did something and uh, was asked to kind of help. And since then, you know, it's six years now that I've been kind of on this journey, working through all of the different caveats, working with great people, you know, like Mindy, Billy, work with Garrison and Nancy and Dawn and um, you know, all of the interns. And it's been, a, it's been a really awesome, awesome time. And Faith as well. Faith, loved your documentary, by the way. Thank you so much. And last but not least, Nancy. Sure. So I was inspired by my father. My father was a business person and professional, and he continued to wear button down shirts and slacks after retirement. And upon moving into assistant living, because my dad needed a little help, he broke his hip, his hand, and that very same hip all in about 10 months. So the nurses and aides didn't want to take the time. And I always pause and say they didn't want to take the time to dress my father in the clothing he wanted to. And I also had power of attorney over my dad. So I was like the mama bear. And I thought, okay, there has to be an easier way. There has to be a way that someone can wear the clothing they want that's easy on, easy off and Prior to starting Smart Adaptive Clothing, I was in corporate America for 20 plus years managing business units. So I was running businesses with someone else's money. And I realized someone like my dad, the caregivers, someone living with disability, temporary, permanent injuries. Okay. So I thought of an idea and we make that easy on, easy off, stylish adaptive clothing that we want people to feel that they want everyone's eyes on them when they walk in a room, roll in a room, use crutches, and just lead with your style. Thank you, Nancy. Good evening, everyone. My name is Emma Borokov. I am going to be a senior at the University of Texas at Austin. I am majoring in youth and community studies and minoring in educational psychology with a specialization in disability studies. So now that we've heard from some of the experts on adaptive fashion, Garrison and Faith, can you guys tell us a little bit about your style and maybe share some of the challenges that you experience when wearing what you want to wear? If you guys could please keep your responses just within one minute or so. And Garrison, we'll start with you. Yeah, there's tons of challenges with living with a disability and finding the proper clothing to stay trendy 
that's one of the issues. So me personally, um, I have like a streetwear, urban wear style. So with that said, I try to pretty much stay up to date with the latest fashions that able-bodied individuals would be wearing. And, you know, a lot of times with like skinny leg jeans for men, it's quite difficult for you to, you know, get your ankle through if you have limited mobility, you know, with their lower extremities. Thank you so much for sharing, Garrison. And Faith, can we hear from you? Yeah. Um, so I have cerebral palsy. Uh, I can't say cerebral palsy. And I wear AFOs. So magnet jeans are kind of a um, must for me to get my magnet jeans over my braces. Right. So it, so it's hard even just as for a caretaker, because a lot of times I'm the one that's dressing her. It's very hard. And it's always been a struggle to put jeans on. So when they have the openings at the bottom and that extra width, it's amazing. Um, and also to, for, um, to get jeans on and off. So otherwise, if it's just strictly leggings, it's, she just feels like she's limited. Um, so I, I think, uh, yeah, those are our biggest challenges. Yeah. It's getting over the AFOs. Thank you and guys so much for sharing. Is amazing. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone. I'm Adriana Capri. I'm a fashion merchandising major and will be graduating from Merit College this coming fall. Billy and Nancy, you are the true meaning of entrepreneurs. Your businesses were created out of passion and personal through personal experience. Can you share some of your biggest successes with us? Let's start with you, Nancy. Sure, great question. Thank you. So some of the successes, I like to break it down and keep it as real as possible. So the biggest success is the first shirt that someone purchased. I will always remember them. The person's name is Ralph and he bought it for his wife. So knowing that you're doing something that there's a need and that validation that will make someone's life, I get the chills. Oh my God, the chills from my head to my toes. So that validation, that making a difference. Thank you, Nancy. And you, Billy? Well, I can really echo Nancy there. Uh, we, we've had lots of successes and actually lots of failures too. But I definitely remember the first time we uh, sold a pair of shoes. It was a very, very special day. But I'd actually go back even farther to the real, I'd say the biggest success we've ever had and something that can really be never taken away from me. Um, when I put my shoes on again, independently, I broke my neck when I was 18. Um, I put my shoes on again at 36. So we had a prototype and it worked out to be exactly how we had hoped. And when I put those shoes on again for the first time, it was literally half a lifetime later the emotion that came swelling up with something so simple that so many can take for granted. It was so special that um, we had to share it and we didn't know what that looked like, but we knew we had to move forward. And uh, it's been really incredible what it's turned into. Thank you, Billy. Hi everyone, I'm Jane and I'm going to be a senior at the University of Michigan studying communications and media with a minor in entrepreneurship. Thank you, Nancy and Billy. This question is for you, Derek. We know that Zappos Adaptive carries many mainstream adaptive clothing lines such as Billy Footwear and Smart Adaptive Clothing, but how many companies did you start out with and where are you today? Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for the question. I mean, when we started, it was, uh, there wasn't a lot of, of folks out there that were kind of uh, a part of this movement. Right. Um, Mindy, I think I met you years and years and years ago at, at, at a, a Tommy type brand thing and you were pushing them. And I, I just knew that that was something that, you know, we, we at Zappos Adaptive needed to, to to bring on board. But when we started, I mean, there was just a handful of brands, I think like maybe four or five that had actually like designed products specifically for people with dressing needs. So, you know, for us, it was uh, let's let's you know, go out and let's look for other brands. Let's look for other products that we know are going to make a difference in people's every day. Um, and since then, I mean, we've expanded, we have over, you know, 30 brands now in both the, on our Zappos adaptive platform and then with our new, uh, single and different size shoe programs. So, I mean, it, it definitely took a lot of work between myself and, and the amazing team that I work with, 
uh, to kind of either convince brands like, hey, there's something that you can do here or to really go out and like curate and find and, and, and discover these new brands that can really make a change, a positive change in, in people's lives. Thank you, Derek. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lily, and I'm a rising senior at the University of Maryland, majoring in hearing and speech science and minoring in disability studies. Our next question is for Faith and Garrison. What does it mean to you to be a part of a runway show and see people with disabilities and ad campaigns? Let's start with you, Faith. It means kind of like thrills to me because say if you're in Target and you see someone with a disability, you're like, oh, um, that's different. That's really cool. Like usually it's not the norm and I love that we're bringing out big stuff like that in brands. Mm -hmm. Help to advocate for, for people with disabilities, yeah. And Garrison, what about you? And for me, it's very important. Um, representation matters. And I think that progress is being made when I do see like brands like Target, um, of course, Zappos Adaptive and other mainstream brands um, really incorporating individuals living with disabilities into some of their campaigns and in some of their media um, material. So I think it's a very important um, you know, goal to at least have one out of five billboards with the individual with a disability on that billboard. Um, however, progress has been made in the last 10 to 15 years of me living with a disability. Hi, my name is Ella Krasnowski. I'm gonna be a senior at Melbourne High School and I'm very passionate about fashion. This question is for Billy, Derek, and Nancy. There are more than 1 billion people with a disability on our planet with the buying power of trillions annually. What kind of response have you received from the community of people with disabilities? Let's start with Billy. Well, I love that question and uh, the response has been tremendous. Uh, you know, that, that similar experience that I had when I put my shoes on for the first time where there's just so much emotion. We get this feedback from, from our customers and they're saying thank you and they're saying that they are able to put their shoes on. But in between the lines, you can just feel the emotion. You can feel the tears of joy of being able to do something that, you know, is was very challenging and now it's very easy. But beyond that, um, having that type of feedback, we also get a lot of suggestions of um, and like education, like educating us as a brand of what the need is out there and how big the need is and what we can do to help and add value. So the response from the customer has been very positive, but it's also been very encouraging to push us to do more. Thank you. Can we hear from Nancy? Sure, yes, another good question. And um, echoing Billy's comments, the, the response has been overwhelming and it's wonderful to get the feedback to see someone and oftentimes whether I'm with them at an event or a pop-up or we get emails or messages, phone calls, where someone will tell us how it literally changed their life. Perhaps they can dress themselves again, as Billy mentioned with the shoes. And I, I'm thinking of a customer who could only um, wear pullover shirts put on by her caregiver. And now she can put on the blouse because it's with Velcro and you literally just pat it down. So giving someone, offering that independence and building confidence is what we all want. If someone is living with a disability or not, we all want to look and feel our best, have that confidence. And we like to say the sexiest thing you can wear is confidence. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Can we hear from Derek? Uh, yeah, thank you so much, Ella. Um, so Zappos Adaptive, we've had a tremendous response, both positive and constructive. And that positive feedback is, is always so, so amazing. And it, and it gives you the feels, right, Nancy, right, Billy? Like when we, when we get those, when we get that great feedback, it's just, it, it really kind of energizes you and recharges and like, we gotta keep pushing. Um, but when we do get that constructive feedback, you know, that's what I think we really thrive on because we wanna use that community, use the community's feedback um, to, to do better, right? To make changes that uh, will help Zappos Adaptive 
uh, get to the next level, right? Get more brands on board, you know, convinced that this is something that everybody should be a part of. Um, but, but it's also for the community. I mean, what we're trying to do is, is not just for us, you know, right? This is for the betterment of the community. This is for the betterment of the movement. And we need that feedback. We want that feedback, whether positive or constructive, to really kind of keep pushing us to uh, get to the next level and really keep continuing this. Because I think that this is, you know, this is something that we should all be proud that we're a part of. Um, and whatever we can do to take that feedback and iterate on it and just really keep pushing. I think that's that's all what we should challenge ourselves to do. Thank you, Derek. Hi, I'm Brian Fernandez, and I'm gonna be a junior at Montclair State University, majoring in business management and finance. This question is for all panelists, should you wish to share. Not enough of the industry designs and sells mainstream fashionable adaptive clothing. In a sentence or two, what advice do you have for brands or designers trying to expand into the adaptive space? Starting with you, Billy. Wow, that's a great question. That's a big question too. Um, and I can really only answer it by just my own experience of how we, how we approached it as a brand. And uh, it was a matter of, it may seem counterintuitive, but it's uh, starting small. You know, um, For us as a business to be able to add value to the community, add value to the world, we needed to survive as a business. So it was a matter of like creating something that wasn't necessarily meant for one individual, it was meant for all individuals, really kind of blur the lines, really try to leverage universal design. And then trying to be able to create something that has, um, that could be seen as an adaptive feature, but also a can, as a convenient feature for others. So making those slight type of changes of existing stuff that's already out there in the marketplace it was really, it's worked, it's worked well for us and it's put us in a position to make much bigger steps um, on more than niche side. Thank you, Billy. Can we hear from you, Derek? Uh, yeah, and just, Bill, I love that you, Billy, I love that you brought up universal design because I think that's mm -hmm. like something that a lot of brands, designers don't necessarily realize that there's a slight change that they might be able to make on, a, on an existing product that's gonna open that up to a whole new customer base, right? So if there is that opportunity for designers and brands to enter this space, like don't be afraid, ask questions. You know, there's this movement and like what we're kind of a part of is, is a very close knit community from what I'm finding. And everybody wants to help everybody. We wanna see this, whether you're brand X, brand Y, we want you to be successful because it's just gonna help everybody else. So I think for, for any of those brands and designers, just be open-minded. If you have questions, there's, there's, I mean, you give it a Google, one of us will pop up and, and we're all of us, I know all of us are very open to answering questions from, from whether it's a brand designer, like whoever. Um, so we just wanna really continue seeing this, this move forward and however we can help and, uh, you know, especially those brands and, and designers just kind of tweak something, you know, we're, we're all about it. And, and, and just don't be afraid, ask questions. Um, and uh, it might work out for you. Thanks, Derek. How about you, Nancy? Sure, great. Um, echoing both of my friends comments, Billy and Derek. So it's, it's really interesting. And I also chose to start small where right now we focus on the upper body with shirts and blouses and listening to the feedback. So whether you're a brand, you're a designer, you're already in business, listening to feedback. And um, specifically, we just launched a couple of new designs last week, listening to the feedback of our customers, what they want, new blouses and shirts for women. So, you know, get out there, network. So if you only remember one word that I mentioned today, it's network. So mm -hmm. ask if you can help, ask for advice, you know, color outside the lines. If you're in design, color outside the lines, try it, prototype it, test it, and test with people who aren't just your friends and family because they love you to pieces. And they're like, yeah, you're great. So you want <laughs> feedback from people who may be a little extra honest. So just keep trying work and build that community. It's a wonderful community. We like to say a movement, join the journey and so many like-minded people here tonight. It's amazing. And we can continue and just, it's going to flourish. Thank, Thank you, Nancy. Any advice, Faith? Just continue to um, be 
like open to like people's advice that have disabilities. Yeah, and I can attest to that too because she had even um, did some testing with some some clothing with Mindy in the very beginning with the Tommy Adaptive, and you know we sat on the phone with the designer and Mindy and gave you know our feedback and they took our advice and moved forward with stuff. I've reached out to Billy. Yeah, several times actually, quite a few years ago, and his shoes are phenomenal. Um, and same with Derek. So just can just for you guys to continue to work with the disability community and get their feedback um, to what the needs really are. And I think you guys do a great job of doing that and putting it out there. Um, so thank you. And just basically ask what our needs are. Yes. Thank you. And lastly, you, Garrison. Just to piggyback on what everybody else pretty much said, um, I believe that asking questions is very important. Um, you know, a lot of times I do understand that brands are, you know, they don't want to feel like they're being unethical with asking the disability community certain questions, you know, in regards to their disability. But I think that's the best way of furthering the movement and as well, you know, universal design creates access accessibility for everyone. So that's the only way um, that we're gonna have the modification that we need is by providing individuals with the input so that brands with the input so that they can make the appropriate product for us. Thank you so much everyone for answering all those questions. My name is Janine Cramblett and I'm the volunteer internship coordinator for Runway of Dreams. We have time for a few of the audience questions and I'll be reading off um, two of the first few that we have. Um, so one we have is from, I just lost it, where did it go? It's from our audience member, Sabrina, and she's asking if anyone is working on socks. Uh, she has two autistic kids that will not wear them. And so she has to buy shoes every month. Um, so if anyone has any questions or any answers to that, Derek, Billy, or Nancy? I can, uh, um, there, uh, one thing that I found within working with different brands is there's always like a need, right? So, you know, Billy, there was a need, right? Nancy, there was a need um, to do something different. And, and there, there are a handful of brands, one that Zappos Adaptive has, uh, shameless plug, uh, that, that is specific for uh, sensory issues and has um, uh, hooks, uh, uh, basically like openings on the side that are stitched that you can manipulate and get the sock on yourself. Uh, um, so there's one brand I know, and it was based on a need for the creator's grandson who couldn't put his socks on. Um, so uh, I can, I'll share the brand. It's, it's called Beetlebug Socky Talks. Billy, I think actually introduced me introduced me to them. So now Zappos Adaptive carries this particular brand specific for dressing needs around, around socks. So Give it a give it a search on the old Zappos. Thank you, Derek. Hi, my name is David Minaya. I'm from Jersey City, New Jersey, and I just graduated from Montclair State University with a bachelor's degree in public relations and media arts. Billy, this question is for you from Kelly Ann. What is one thing you wish you knew about running a business when you first started? Oh. <laughs> wow, that's an awesome question. Um, well, you know, I didn't grow up as an entrepreneur, um, and uh, now I am one, and I had to quit my job to work three times as hard. So being an entrepreneur is a real grind, but I got to say, like, being an entrepreneur is absolutely incredible because you're, you really um, are put in the driver's seat, and uh, there's nothing, I, I wouldn't trade this life, I mean, it's just amazing. Um, I didn't realize it was going to be as hard as it is, but I had also had no idea how rewarding it was going to be to be able to work with amazing people and the power of word of mouth and the power of relationship and the power of networking. Nancy, you were commenting on that. Um, when you're working together as a community and uh, people are coming together as a team, it truly is remarkable what can happen. So may that be through social media, may that through for advocacy, collaboration. Um, I didn't know any of that on the front end. So I've been kind of learning as I go. And uh, we have a big team here that keeps this machine running. And um, I would say that those that are looking to start a business, you don't need to know everything about starting a business. The trick is just don't quit and keep grinding. Hi everyone, I'm Sydney Mervis. I'm going to be a senior at Melbourne High School. I look forward to working in the fashion industry one day. This question is from Devo Star for Derek and Nancy. 
How hard was the transition from designing everyday fashion into adaptive clothing? Derek, let's start with you. Um, well, luckily, um, I'm not a designer, uh, so kudos to you know all of the folks out there that are designers. But uh, I did actually I transitioned from just everyday. Uh, you know, I was a denim buyer for a long time, men's and women's fashion. So kind of one thing that I'm, I'm kind of grateful for is kind of having that little bit of a background, because as, you know, Garrison mentioned earlier, you know, uh, wants to be fashionable, right? He wants to wear everything that everybody else is wearing. So kind of what I've taken from my past learnings is, is, hey, you know, people here, they want to be independent, but they also want to look great. So how can, you know, these different brands, these different people uh, that are designing things kind of keep that in mind and keep pushing for that? Because that's, that's one thing, you know, you don't want to have anything pigeonholed. Everything should be everything. Everything should be universal. And if we can get all of those different brands kind of on board um, so that their product is fashionable, everybody's wearing it, um, I think that just kind of helps this movement, movement go forward. Thank you, Derek. And you, Nancy? Another great question. Yes. So I think what's key, what helped me and continues to help me and have to push forward is when <clears throat> you come up with a design, have multiple people test it with different abilities, different disabilities, different needs. So keeping that universal design in mind. So um, whether we're talking about someone with paralysis, could be a spinal cord injury, it could be a stroke, it could be Parkinson's disease, it could be someone, a wheelchair user for different reasons and someone who just likes the clothing because it's cool and stylish and trendy and fun. So keep that in mind and have different people test it and tell you what their needs are. As Faith and Garrison mentioned, that's so important because you can come up with the best design, but if it's not what people want and need, you know, it sits in a warehouse. So just be mindful of that, of different needs, universal, and have it test, have people test it. Perfect. Well, I'm going to actually have a quick commercial break here because we want to encourage many, many more people to ask questions. We have an unbelievable opportunity with the panelists that are uh, here tonight, both um, people with disabilities as well as entrepreneurs, uh, business people like Derek. So this is your opportunity, everybody joining in. Please send the questions in, in the Q&A. We would uh, love to have them answered. But what I wanna just take a moment um, to talk about is one of the key reasons why I started Runway Dreams and Gamut Management was to make change happen, uh, not only in the fashion industry, but you know, I have small little girl goals of the world to make that change happen too. For a population that is um, trying to navigate a mainstream world that wasn't created for them. And one of the big goals um, in that my process was to inspire and work with the next generation and generations to come. And I hope that you have all experienced tonight how hopeful and definite I feel that change is going to happen. But that is easy for me to say, and I would really love to just take a minute to have our interns talk about what they garnered from this summer and maybe aha moments that they have, because this is what is going to make change happen. So everyone, I'm sorry but I am just going to spontaneously call you. We did a little bit of a, a turn on this before, so I know that you're gonna do a great job. Miranda, let's start with you. Yeah, so one huge takeaway that I got from just interning with Runway of Dreams and learning more about um, the community of people with disabilities is that I honestly did not know the how big of a lack of there is for um, adaptive clothing. And also just with interning here, just how much goes into event production and how much really goes into making things happen in the industry. Um, and yeah, that's kind of what I took away from this summer and everything else. Perfect, Adriana. Hi. Um so my biggest takeaway is that 
um, I've been learning that everybody has like a story about disability, whether that's yourself, a sibling, a friend, anybody. Like I have a disability, I'm physically disabled. I'm in a, I use a wheelchair um, and I guess I didn't realize how so many people are just connected to disability in general and wanna help out. I love that. Steven. I, um, I would definitely say my biggest takeaway what is um, how, how you really could turn nothing into something or something, you know, that could start off as small as it may seem and how big, um, how far ahead you could get with just the right people, the right team with, and the right vision with the right motivation. Um, so the, everything with that I took away from runway was extremely inspirational. Hmm. I love that. Lily, how about you? So going back to what Miranda said, my major specifically is so specific. And so this internship was a great way to broaden my skills with marketing, business, and everything in between that. And so one thing I took away is while Billy, Nancy, and Derek are doing an amazing job, there's still a long way to go and getting bigger brands into the marketing, into adaptive fashion is the big push and the next mission. We'll do one more because I think we're getting a lot of questions, which is fantastic. Emma, how about you? I guess my main takeaway from working at Runway of Dreams would be that people really are willing to, you know, help with this cause. And I guess reaching out to people was a lot easier than I thought it would be because a lot more, a lot more people are willing to help out and people are really amazed by the cause. And so reaching out is always worth it because a lot of people want to help. And yeah. I love that. I'm actually going to just say one more quick little tidbit and then I'm going to turn it over to John for our questions. But I would love everybody to kind of marinate on this a little bit, especially anybody out there that is thinking about getting into the adaptive space. Do you know when the button and buttonhole was invented? Anybody can quickly put it into the chat. Give it a try, give it a go, anyone, give it a guess. The very thing that we use on a daily basis when we run our lives through this thing was created when? Let's see, we have 1902, uh, 1700s, 18th century. The answer is the 13th century. We are using technology that was developed in the 13th century on products that we wear on a daily basis. I know we can do better. We can all do better and rethink the way that things are done. Doesn't mean that you have to do it that way. So I wanted to kind of leave you on that before I turn it over to Dawn. Everybody think about that and we can make change happen together. Dawn, over to you. Thank you. We have a lot of great questions. And I also want to give the opportunity for Carly and Jordan to close our event toward the end. But this is a question from April Stanley. I am a fashion professor, professor for an undergraduate program. I have been trying to implement various assignments and projects for adaptive wear into apparel classes. What recommendations do you have for increasing my students' awareness and experience for adaptive wear? Who wants to take this? Thinking. Uh, say that one more time. I think I might what have recommend, a, What recommendations do you have for increasing my students' awareness and experiences for adaptive wear? I think- I'll go, um, ahead, Derek. I'll go after you. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, just, uh, you know, Google is a very good resource and just kind of Googling or finding the different um, communities that are already there. There's the Mighty, there's um, Parenting Special Needs Mag. There, there's a lot of different groups that are out there that are doing things specific for the disability community. So kind of uh, aligning with them and kind of understanding what they're doing to push the message forward, to, to provide insight, like all of the things that, that these different organizations are doing, I think would be a great way for uh, anybody that's interested or anybody that's curious about how they can um, kind of enter the space. 
that's kind of what I would suggest is just kind of giving it a Google and that there's going to be a lot of great resources that, that, that can pop up. Thank you, Derek. Uh, what I would like to add is um, there really isn't a designer or a design team out there, myself included, that can enter this space without including people with disabilities into every step of the process. And that is actually one of the reasons why we created Gamut Management um, to be able to utilize people with disabilities to plug in to brands and companies that want to get into the adaptive space. But from a student perspective, include people with disabilities into the process. Bring them into your classes. Talk about what the challenges are. As uh, Faith um, explained, she was really one of the, the first models that I brought in to say, help me understand what can we do better to make this process easier for you, for you to be able to self-dress. Karen was very involved in that. Include the population. We, they are vocal, we are vocal. Th this is the way that you will get your students involved. It is one of the biggest takeaways that I think our interns had is just really being able to engage with people with disabilities to garner that understanding. And for any students that are out there, we at Runway of Dreams do scholarship contests, in terms of those that are getting involved into the adaptive space. And certainly you can email us to find out more about that, that we, we encourage it. But the bottom line is you have to include people with disabilities into every step of the value chain. May I add something too? Yes. Great points, Mindy and Derek. And then um, if you're, wherever you're based, you can reach out as Mindy was just saying too. You can reach out to a designer. And for me, I live in Philadelphia. I'm based in Philadelphia. And several of the universities that have fashion programs have reached out to me. So when we could go in, I went into the university and spoke to them, or we've done virtuals. And in fact, I attended one of the meetings where my friend, our friend Mindy spoke at Drexel. So it's out there, build the network, have your folks reach out to your people, but you, you just have to network. I, I, people will help reach out to any of us. And you know, there are more and more brands popping up and um, we can do this together. So yeah, we can help. To go off of what both of you were just saying, actually, Dana Connell asked a great question. What is the best way to connect with the community to test products or ideas? Are there social media groups or organizations? We mentioned networking, but, but how does this person get out there to work with people to test things? I will definitely take that. Um, and I am going to plug Gamut Management as we are a talent management company exclusively for people with disabilities. And we use the word talent very specifically because we feel everybody has a talent, whether that is being a part of focus groups, testing products, uh, helping to develop products all the way up to advertising, marketing, et cetera. So we have populated over 600 people with different disabilities across the world, all different ages, ethnicities, and that list is growing and growing and growing for just that reason, so that there is a place to go to have products tested, to have products ideated on, and to work hand in hand with people with disabilities. This question is for Faith. We're very curious to know, what is your favorite piece of adaptive clothing, Faith? Oh, I love that one. Um, I like the Billy shoes. She's 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 being realistic because the shoes are everyday part of it. They have to be fashionable and they have to go over the AFOs properly. <laughs> good answer. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome, Dave. <laughs> so here's a good question. When will the prices of adaptive clothing become more closely priced to regular clothing, i.e., cheaper. A lot of us are on limited budgets. I understand that it takes more work to make them, but it's hard to afford them. I'm also going to start with that and certainly everybody else can chime in. The uh, brands that are in the adaptive space have actually worked very, very hard to have the adaptive products um, be equal, if not a teeny bit more than the typical versions. And 
they have been absorbing the extra costs because they don't want the population to be able to, to have to pay anything extra because they are disabled. I think the way that I'd love to answer that question is that we are working very hard to make sure that brands on every part of the spectrum in the fashion industry from budget to luxury understand that people with disabilities come in every socioeconomic background. So Target has adaptive options. Kohl's has adaptive options. There's many more, JC Penney is launching in uh, September and actually launching on the Runway of Dreams um, show in September. So thankfully there are really brands that are in every kind of step of the, the budgetary backgrounds that are really getting into the space. Nancy, Billy, Derek. Um, I can go. Um, yeah, so we, we definitely try to make our shoes as competitive as possible um, with like Converse and Vans and, you know, Nike, all the big boys out there in the space. And uh, really the way we're able to achieve that is um, by making a product that works across many, many audiences. So it really circles back to the whole universal design concept. And that's the way we approach it. And something similar for smart adaptive clothing where it's approachable um, price point is similar to many of the major brands out there also um, more affordable than others. So for us, it's the garment, it's about quality, ease of use, the universal design. And we truly, truly try to make the price and actually do make the price as competitive as we can. And our clothing is currently made in the United States. So we're also proud of that. And, you know, keep an eye out where we really are trying. And I think Mindy made a great point too, of they're all different price points and all different needs. So we are trying just so you know. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, from, from our perspective on the, on the retail side of things, you know, we're definitely trying to ensure that, you know, what we're offering to our, to our, our customer base is, uh, priced fairly. Um, uh, one such, such instance is, you know, with, I mentioned this before, but with our, our single and different size shoe program, you know, we wanted to be able to provide a price that was just for one shoe, right? Um, instead of having to pay, let's say $80 for two pair and you only need one or, or you need two different sizes, you know, we wanted to try to make sure that we were just cutting that price in half and ensuring that if you only needed one shoe, you're only paying $40 if you needed two, whether they were the same size or not, you could get them for the price of what the, you know, two size nines would be, whatever. Um, and, and that's one thing that we're really conscious of, uh, you know, even when it's not specific to the single shoe program is just, you know, being, uh, uh, you know, looking at what the market is, it has kind of, uh, showed for what prices should be and really trying to, to get to that. Um, but um, we're definitely like, we're working at that and, and working with our brands and, and just trying to, to, to figure out how we can get those prices to where they're more mainstream. Thank you. All right, so this question I'm just noticing, it just, it's asked in a bunch of different ways. And I know it was sort of discussed through, um, throughout the Q&A, but everyone's really looking for advice from you guys in starting out in the business of adaptive design. Um, can you just give a little bit more advice, I guess, because this question has come up in now three different questions. They want more advice from you experts in starting a business in the adaptive space. So I can start. Um, when we started our business, we actually did two Kickstarter campaigns. So um, doing a Kickstarter campaign took a lot of, and if you don't know what a Kickstarter campaign is, basically you, you can put together a video and you can put together various reward levels and you set yourself a goal and then you have a collective groups or crowdfunding. And um, what it does is two things. One is since you have to do all your homework on the head of time, you have to prepare for it. You've kind of created your business case, you've created your money and you're being able to like wrap your arms around an idea for people to look at before you start sharing. And uh, so that's one element that's important in starting a business. But the second thing is um, you get great feedback. You, you know um, if the audience is listening, if they're interested in the product. So if it's a success, you get the funding. If it's not, you can try again. 
So we ran two Kickstarter campaigns. We were fortunate that both were successful. And we learned a tremendous amount um, from both of those campaigns. And it really helped us build a foundation, which later became Billy Footwear. I'm going to jump in also um, because I think I'm correct on uh, at least the panelists that I, I am actually a, a fashion designer. Um, so the, if the, we have others out there that are already in the design world, similar to starting any new brand, you have to know your target audience. You have to understand the population that you are designing for, able-bodied, not able-bodied. So I think through that process as you would uh, in the industry. And if even if you're not in the industry, like Nancy, who completely did something differently, she had the experience of her father and, and took the feedback. But I always really, really believe and always recommend start with research. And that research means start talking to people with disabilities, understand what the challenges are, understand how products can be developed to make it easier to either dress yourself or be dressed, put on shoes, brush your teeth, you name it. People with disabilities have to do all the above. So do your research, understand the population, and then think about what the product is. Would anybody else like to add to that uh, question? All right, so that was, oh, go ahead, sorry. I was just going to say for me, I did it a tiny bit differently. And um, so I did it on my own, I self-funded and I joined incubators. There are incubators all over the US, all over the world. So you can join an incubator and start building prototypes, whatever you're looking for. Um, there are different types of incubators or then I joined a fashion incubator, the Philadelphia Fashion Incubator, and that helped me too. So again, echoing uh, Mindy and Billy and get out there and try it. Sometimes the best idea is never made, so try it. It's all you, Mindy. Well, actually, I think we're going to have uh, Carly and Jordan close us out, and then I will say a final word. Hi, everyone. I'm Carly Blitzer, and I'm a junior at Syracuse University and the founder of my own apparel brand called Major Clothing. So I'm here to wrap things up with Jordan. First and foremost, we want to thank our incredible panelists for sharing their pearls of wisdom with us. We also want to thank all of you, our guests, for joining us this evening. We understand that for some of you, this is your first introduction to fashion inclusivity. And we hope it's not your last. Hi everyone, I'm Jordan Graber, an upcoming sophomore at the University of Texas at Austin, where I'm studying special education. On behalf of all the interns, I would like to thank Don and Janine for their leadership. We could not have done this without you both. We wish everyone on this Zoom the best of luck and hope you will consider being a part of the fashion inclusion movement. Please follow us at Runway of Dreams and join us for our Fashion Revolution event on September 9th in person or virtually on September 12th. Unbelievable. Well, thank you everybody for joining the panel discussion this evening. Tremendous gratitude to our panelists, Billy, Faith, Nancy, Garrison, Derek. As always, you are extraordinary. And I would be completely remiss not to, first of all, shout out John and Janine for your incredible work of, of really pulling together an unbelievable summer internship program at Runway of Dreams. And to all of our interns, you amaze me, you inspire me. I cannot wait to see what you all do next. And I will certainly be on the sidelines cheering you on. And as always, you have a home at Runway of Dreams and Gamut Management. And we as a team and an organization are incredibly grateful for the hard work and dedication that you gave this summer. And thank you again. Thank you everybody for joining us and hope you have a wonderful evening. Bye.